coming soon to own on your head. Oh, who's getting buffer than a cookie jar is me, say who, and me, and Leah and I broke up like three months ago. What's cracking guys, Omar Isaf here. Today we're going to be talking about how to extend your thoracic park. I'm just kidding. Um, today's a serious video. Uh, there's this... Probably is like the worst time possible to be uh, mentioning this with all the like ligma stuff going around. Not the best time to let people know that you have an actual disease, but it's relevant right now. So I kind of just wanted to get it out of the way. Um, I've actually had this disease since I was born. The whole entire time I've been making the videos too, obviously. There have only been like a few times that people have like noticed uh, some, some aspect of this disease that I have and like kind of pointed it out as like a joke. And I always tried to like laugh it off and pretend like it really wasn't a big deal. But especially with this build that I've built right now, uh, I think I, sh I wanna let you guys know. I was born with a disease called smallpox. A lot of people think I'm talking about smallpox, which is like a completely different smallpox. It's a very serious condition where it's so hard to explain. Um, the simplest way to explain it is when every baby, well, when most babies are born, they have a particular amount of skin. There's like nine ice cream trucks outside right now. They got a certain amount of skin and as they grow up, or as some people say, you know, get older, um, they're like, you know, their, their guts and like their bones and muscles or, you know. As all that stuff starts to grow, then the skin kind of gets the idea and it's like, oh, I'll grow too. Not with smallpox. My skin never grew. And because of that, my insides just become continuously more and more dense as they try to expand, but they don't have anywhere to go. And I don't get any bigger. My whole entire life, I've been three foot two, 550 pounds. I mean, I've I've lost a, a few pounds recently, if you guys haven't noticed, but it's uh, maybe, I'm maybe down to 525, but it's hard. It's hard dealing with it on its own, but then the worst part seems to be, at least as long as I've been doing YouTube, there are particular things that I'll build and I'll just get made fun of. Like a while ago, I made a normal sized chair and all the comments were like, ooh, clickbait, this isn't a normal sized chair, that's a big chair. Like making fun of me, because the chair looks really big next to me and it's hard, dude, it's tough. But I wanted to let you guys know because I sent pictures of what I built today to some people that I thought were my friends and they had similar responses to all the bullies on YouTube just talking about, oh, that's a big box cutter. Oh, where'd you get a blade for that? You probably had to custom build that, didn't you? And so I just wanted to let all of you guys know that um, so we can get on with the build, I guess. Today we're gonna be making just this regular sized box cutter. It's fully functional. You can slide it up and you know, it's a box cutter. It's really, it's just a regular old box cutter. Um, oh, I made the uh, the bolt the perfect size so that you could unscrew it with a penny. I don't know if I have a penny. Oh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, you can just sort of, it's perfect size. It's pretty cool. But yeah, I don't know if um, maybe letting you guys know about my condition will just kind of make the bullying worse or, or hey, maybe it will help. Maybe I can start spreading awareness about smallpox. Well guys, uh, it might be a really simple build, but I think it came out really clean and uh, I, Hopefully you guys just enjoy the craftsmanship and whatever and it, you know, it's something to watch. Thank you for everybody who will have the sensitivity to not make comments about my height and my weight and things that I'm very insecure about. So yeah, here it is guys, the normal size box cutter. Hope you enjoy. A Akira. Let's go. Clean up your room. 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 That's a good start. Organize your local landscape. Schedule your time. Start taking control of yourself. See if you can stop saying things you know to be lies. So already I made kind of a mistake. I went to this uh, steel retail shop that I usually go to to get my steel. And uh, I made the mistake of thinking that they might have um, 
What the heck do you call it? Oh, steel. Uh, no, no steel at the steel retail shop. To me, it seemed like an odd business tactic for a steel retail shop, but who am I to judge? So I just had to go to the hardware store and get the dreaded mild steel plate. If this was supposed to be like a dead serious knife, this would be a no-go. You cannot harden mild steel. You can get it sharp enough to like chop into stuff, but you're never gonna get it like paper shreddingly sharp like my uh, cleavers were, for example. But being that this is just for packages, I think it's gonna work out okay. So I traced out my stencil and I'm gonna cut this out with my angle grinder. Does my voice sound weird? I think I'm getting sick again. Like I don't, I, I'm not loud. Yo, Percocet, Miley. Okay, now I'm gonna throw this good boy on the belt sander and shape up the edges how I want them to be. Once I got that done, I'm gonna grind the face, the face is fat. I'll grind the faces flat. Just get the mill stick, just, oh my gosh. Just to get the mill scale off and then from there, I'm gonna work on the bevels. Now I'm gonna do a different finish on the face than on the edge of the blade as you'll see with like regular, I mean, other normal size box cutters. Normal size, just like this one. And once I got that all finished, we'll be able to start working on the handle. Here's a little trick that I learned for marking uh, the center of your bevel that I learned from, I think, Trollsky. Pretty sure it was Trollsky. I think Russian knife maker. This metal is a quarter inch thick, so I've got a quarter inch drill bit. And uh, typically you would uh, mark it up with like a, a marker, but this still has some mill scale on the edge of it, so I'm just gonna scrape into the mill scale. All right, the line that's kind of more on that side is the one that I'm gonna go by. And then here's the top of the bevel. I think I'm gonna try out my new 26 grit belt. This should be done in like four seconds. Right by the sea, and I feel the breeze. And you're looking at me like I'm all that you need. We need more wood. All right, I'm looking at the shape of this husky hammer, and I'm thinking at least the bottom edge is going to be a pretty good stencil. I'm gonna trace this out. 
Nah, that's too short. All right, I traced around it with the blade storage down here ish. The positioning of stuff can change while I'm building. I just need a rough idea of how long to make this. I think my fear is actually coming to realization. Probably gonna have to go back to the store and grab another piece of wood. I'm definitely gonna need another board. I'm gonna need uh, two for the scales on both sides. I guess it's not even really the scale. It's just the whole entire body of the thing. And then uh, one in the center as a spacer so that, you know, the blade actually has somewhere to go. I'll be back. Together now I'm gonna line up the edges on the belt sander. <laughs> Okay, now this is probably going to be a lot simpler if I cut this out and then bend it up and then show you exactly what it's for. There's just not much sense in me explaining it like this. So yeah, just one second. Alright, now I'm gonna make out the template for the track. I'm gonna find the widest point on here, which is about right there. And uh, the speed square isn't really precise enough. It only goes by quarter inches. So I'm gonna use this one here and just kind of line it up with the edge. And that is three and five eighths. So I got a piece of scrap here, up here. We'll figure out the exact length of it later, but for right now I'm just gonna make a rectangle that's three and five eighths wide. All right, I'll go cut this out on the bandsaw. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now this right here is some half inch plywood. It's not the straight hickory boards. Uh, this is the spacer. So this is what I'm gonna cut the track out of. 
All right, I have to bend the tail up a little bit. This is part of that, uh, what do you call that? The adjustable blade length mechanism, whatever you would call that. All right, now I'll put a little tick right here in the closed position and move it all the way forward to how far I want it when it's open so that the handle part is just a little bit past this corner right here. And I'm gonna put a tick right there. Measure the distance and I'm gonna put an extra tick every inch. These will be all the adjustable positions. Chop out a couple of these little babies, and we're gonna use some more of those little tiny nails to rivet all three of those pieces we just cut out together. All right, so here's the blade sliding mechanism. Here's the thing, it, it does work. If I push it down, slide this forward, it locks into the next little notch. Push that down, it goes all the way up. Here's something that I don't like. It's like that all the way from the bottom to the top. I don't know which one would be considered out of line, but this bottom rail right here and this top rail up here, they're kind of, a, they're doing a little pizza thing when they should be doing a french fry. I'm not gonna feel totally great about this thing unless I can fix that. So I guess I have to head to the store and buy some more epoxy and I'm gonna scrape that off and redo it. All right, I'm not gonna be doing epoxy on this one because I just realized that I don't actually have to lay the plywood flat on top of this. This is gonna be open. The only thing is that little wooden block might bump up against the screws, but then I guess I can just cut out a little piece from the wooden block. Okay, so I guess this is about the position that I need to put it. I think this is a super reasonable amount of wiggle. If anything, that might just be, yeah, a lot of that is just the blade wiggling around inside the holder. <laughs> nice. Man, this is gonna be cool. Heck yeah. All right, for the forward stop, I'm just gonna be screwing a hex bolt onto there. All right, now I'm gonna be drilling out a hole right here to epoxy this nut. Then I'm gonna use this normal size bolt and cut a Phillips head into it. And make a nice little screw. This might be a little complicated. Well, I think I'll be able to use this normal size screwdriver. Come on, little fella. You can do it, buddy. Come in, come in. Get... There we go. Ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> Might be a little big. Well, plenty of room for epoxy, I guess. Put some paper down to make sure my table doesn't get dirty. <coughs> now I finally get to do the staining. It's gonna be ebony for the scales and red oak for the actual body. Alright, 
first I'm gonna superficially attach it with just a little bit of wood glue. Okay, that should be good enough to get the screws in. Moment of truth, boys. Looking good so far. Put the bolt in. All right, well, probably should tighten this a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, let's see it in action. It's pretty good. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I think it turned out really good looking. And I'm working up a sweat just uh, opening this thing. Sweaty eyes, man. This is gonna be absolutely perfect for alpha male, especially those big kahunas. By the way, I really need more packages for alpha male. Like for serious, I'm not gonna be able to do an episode with just two packages and that's like what I have right now. So if you wanna send me a package for the next episode of alpha male or some, some just letters or whatever, go ahead and send it to PO Box 8, Westmont, Illinois 60559. Hopefully the very next video can be an alpha male. I really wanna use this thing. But that's about all I got for today, guys. Thank you all very, very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Later. Bye.